Hello service people, welcome to another video. In this video I want to explain you what is S3 versioning and also uh, what is S3 lifecycle management. I'm going to display these concepts walking you through the AWS console and also showing you an example. Let's get started with uh, creating a bucket first of all. I'm going to call the bucket Enrico versioning uh, test1. Region doesn't matter, I'm gonna use London since I'm in London. And um, here I'm gonna remove the block all public access because I need to show you when I upload the file the different versions. And then here the menu on the bucket versioning. So bucket versioning means that um, S3 is gonna keep multiple version, multiple variation of an object in the same bucket. Here it's saying you can use versioning to preserve, retrieve and store every version of every object stored in your Amazon S3 bucket. So yeah, it's very useful if you want to, you know, have different version of the object, use it as a backup service and any other use case you uh, may think of. So we just need to enable bucket version here, click enable. Uh, we don't need the encryption for the example. If we go on advanced settings, we don't need any of this. So I'm going to move forward and create the bucket. And the bucket has been created. As you can see, it's empty, but uh, we see here a little switch where it's saying show versions. So if we click the, the switch, it's going to show us all the version of an object. Of course, now we have zero objects. So let me upload the first object. It's here. Uh, so it's re really an easy uh, index file with uh, a simple website uh, with like, uh, this is a website one uh, text. So in order to see this file, we need to, um, first of all, enable public access because now, of course, it's saying, it's saying access denied. And to enable public access, now S3 is making it very difficult. So you don't only need to disable this block, but you also need to write a bucket policy. So we need to go here on here, bucket policy, edit. We go on uh, effect allow. Action is going to be S3. Sorry, it's going to be S3 uh, get object and also S3 get object version. And the reserves is going to be the R of my um, S3 bucket, which is here. Very useful. Copy it and I add it here. So I'm allowing the get object and get object uh, action for all the objects inside this bucket. One last thing in order to enable the action on all the objects, we need to add the slash star after the S3 bucket arn. So let's move forward and save the changes. And now if we there is unknown error, let's see where it is. Missing required principle cannot be empty. Uh, and this one is we can just add like a star. And it should work. Okay, now it's it worked. Now uh, our object should be, yeah, as you can see here, there is a red warning, publish accessible. So if I navigate to the index file, copy the URL, I should be able to see website one. And there you go. This is website one. So now what happens if I upload uh, a file with the same name? If I didn't enable the versioning, the file would just, you know, override the original file. But in this case, we will see that it's going to create a new version. So I go on website two, second file, same name. I upload the file. File has been uploaded. And as you can see, now the index file is the latest one. Just uploaded. But if I click the switch here, I will see the two versions. So one is the previous one, the website one, and the other one is uh, website two. In order to see that, we just go here, copy the URL again, and we should be able to see website two. There you go. So now, as you can see, we have in the same bucket two versions of the same file. And you can basically differentiate the, the file version by using the version ID. So each the file has its own version ID. Now, what happens if I delete the file with the versioning uh, enabled? So let's try out, select the file, click delete. And as you can see here, there's um, a warning saying deleting the specified object adds delete markers to them. So this means that if I move forward and delete the object, we will think that the object has been deleted. But if we click again on the switch, we will see there is a delete marker, meaning that the file version is still present on S3 bucket. And as you can see, it's here, but 
it has been deleted and we know that because there is the, the delete marker. If we want to delete the file totally, we also need to delete the marker. So a few things about the versioning. Once the version has been enabled, it cannot be disabled. So if you enable your version in the bucket, it's not possible to disable it. It can be, as we said, a great uh, backup tool. So if you need like backups of your object, it, this is a great uh, feature. Remember that, of course, the older version is are stored into the bucket. So you need to pay attention on the size and also the pricing of your bucket. Now, let's um, see how this feature can actually be very useful with another one, which is the under the management section, the lifecycle rules. The lifecycle rules basically enable you to create um, rules where you can move objects and also different version of the object from one bucket class to another. An example can be move uh, object from the standard class to infrared access a class to save on cost. And so let's, let's see an example how we can do that. Let's uh, put a name here for the rule. I'm gonna call it rule one. And um, here you can decide the rule scope. And I'm gonna click apply to all objects in the bucket. I know it's this. You can, the other one is limit the scope and you can basically set a, a prefix on the objects that you want this rule to be uh, used. It can be useful if you have, you know, different folders in your bucket. But in this case, for the sake of example, I'm gonna just use this one. I know it's that. And here we have the rules actions. So here is saying move current version of objects between storage classes, move not current version, so the oldest version of objects between storage classes, and then you have uh, different, you know, uh, checks that depending on the use case you can enable. In this case, I'm gonna just enable the first one, just for, actually I'm gonna also do this one to show you different uh, use case. So here is saying transition current versions of objects between storage classes. This means that I can decide to move my objects from, you know, the standard class, which is the, st the class of the current bucket, to a different one. Let's say I want to move this one to one zone, infrequent access, because I don't care about, you know, having more than one av availability zone. I want to move it here because it's cheaper than the uh, infrequent access class. And then after after how many days I want to do this, I'm gonna just do after 30 days. So I'm gonna add this transition. And then for non-current versions, so previous versions of the object, I want to move it to an even more cheaper um, class, which can be a Glacier, let's say, Flexible Retrieval. And I want to do it after seven days and here I want, here saying number of version, just leave it default, so all of them. Object, yeah, here is like uh, telling you that, you know, in order to retrieve objects from the glacier, you need to pay a uh, retrieve uh, fee, which is fine. And then here is very useful, there is a menu with a review transition and expiration action. So here in saying for the current version of the objects, once the object has been uploaded, after 30 days, objects are moved uh, to one zone, IA, infrequent access. And then for non-current versions action, after seven days, the objects are moved into Glacier. And then here you can create the rule and it's gonna um, take effect. Of course, this is not instant. It takes some, you know, some time in a matter of uh, minutes or one hour max. And then you have your lifecycle configuration. All right, I hope this video was useful in order to show you the uh, versioning of the files and also the lifecycle management rules. Let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe to the channel to see new videos every week. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. Cheers.